Is it possible that you've overplanned your wedding? I find that a lot of couples become a bit obsessed with filling every moment on their wedding day and they're scared of the guests getting bored and they look at their itinerary and they see an hour here or a two hour gap after the speeches and they start to uh, arrange loan games or casinos and pack in as much as possible. The truth is that in nine out of ten weddings things always run late and you have much less time than you realise Personally, I think it's the transitional moments like getting your guests out of the church can take up to half an hour sometimes or trying to get your guests seated for the meal on a sunny day can take 15, 20, 25 minutes and it's a build-up of those transitional moments which uh, fill the day. When I think about a whole wedding from the first picture to the last picture that I take of the day, I see it in little blocks of time or events or things that happen. So... You walking out of church is one event, and I, I may take eight, ten pictures of that moment, but I'm only looking for one or two of the best shots to tell the story of that particular event. So the more of those little blocks of events I have in a wedding, the richer the story and the greater the variety of images I can, I can deliver. So planning lots of different things on your wedding day actually does help me from a photography point of view. What I do see a lot is people planning all these things in their wedding, but not having enough time to enjoy them. I think what we can learn from Joanna and Thomas's wedding is that they didn't over plan the wedding, yet so much seemed to happen. So welcome to the wedding walkthrough of Joanna and Thomas at the Outbarn near Clitheroe. So we started at Joanna's parents' house it's always good to start the day with a confused dog, I find. Uh, some detail shots. So I love this shot of Dad uh, getting the car ready and this kind of trail of destruction that is left behind him as, the, uh, as he gets too hot and frustrated trying to fit the uh, ribbon on the car. I always like to get a picture of your wedding dress in the morning and I would usually uh, find the best spot around the house to hang it with the nicest light. But I absolutely love when these kind of moments happen where I can get that dress shot in an organic setting, in a natural setting, and it tells more of a story. Even though I'd asked Joanna to step outside and step into the shade of the tree, um, it's often those kind of in-between moments which turn out better. So as Joanna was just turning back to see what was going on with the rest of the wedding crew and the car, uh, the dappled light fell across her dress here uh, and made for fantastic composition. And again, after we had some formal shots of the bridesmaids together with Joanna, it's always just worth kind of hanging back just for 10 seconds for that relaxed moment that comes after a, a kind of paused picture because uh, you often get laughter and people not looking at the camera and they're really, really nice moments to capture. This day was super sunny, super harsh light, so I was constantly trying to get Joanna in the shade of a tree or um, just out of that direct sunlight, basically. So here we're at the church, uh, and the contrast is quite stark, so the church is quite dark uh, as compared to the bright sunshine outside. You can see that contrast really well in this picture where Tom just happened to be stood where the light was coming through the window in the church. So I exposed the picture for Tom's face where the sun was hitting him which was going to uh, throw the background quite dark but obviously Tom's the focus of the story, him waiting for Joanna to go into the church so I think that that shot worked really well. Joanna's arrival, Joanna just always looks great when she's laughing, smiling, crying, she's one of those lucky people that just kind of have a, um, a nice crying face and a nice laughing face, uh, yeah. I love this little moment where Tom's whispering in Joanna's ear. When you photograph a church wedding, you're restricted to where you can stand and you're often fixed in one position. So I often use a zoom lens to zoom in around the church to try and break up the story a little bit. Um, and it's nice when these slightly unusual moments happen, just to tell the story a bit more richly. 
as you can see here, just zooming around the groomsmen making inter interesting compositions. This picture of Tom is totally unrepresentative of Tom's face in any other picture or in real life, but I just couldn't resist loving this picture. Uh, this look out of the corner of his eye just made me chuckle. So going back to what I was saying before about those little moments throughout the day. So as Joanna and Tom walk out of the church, walk back up the aisle, I probably took five or six pictures of this moment. Um, and I'm just picking out that one or two that tell the story best, when the lights are the best, their expressions are the best. And as we leave the church, that's one of the best parts of the day for repertoire style photography, when everybody's relaxed for the first time, uh, everybody's hugging and crying and kissing and it's just chaos really, but a fantastic thing to photograph. Joanna and Tom convinced the local ice cream van to park up outside the church, which I think was a stroke of genius. Uh, I don't know why I like this picture so much. I just find this really, really funny. Um, I love the colours and the ran totally random composition. So on the way from the church to the outbarn, Tom and Joanna suggested that I follow them in the car and we stop up on the moors to get some pictures of the view. Um, I really didn't want to do kind of cliched, uh, stood with the car pictures overlooking the nice scenery. So I was really pushing the boat out, climbing on walls, trying to get different angles, shooting over the top of the car. Um, as you can see here, just to try and get something, something a little different. So, and I was actually quite reluctant initially to just get a shot of them with the car, but Tom decided to sit on the bonnet of the car and this composition just opened itself up for me. Just behind me is the fantastic views, but actually I just love the way that the road disappears into the background and the, the way that they stood together just makes for a super cool picture. Okay, so we've arrived at the outbarn amazing decor that Joanna put together. Joanna and Thomas really cleverly designed elements of their wedding to keep the momentum and keep their guests entertained. Things like building this flower arch, which isn't actually normally at the venue. Uh, guests were there all afternoon taking their own pictures with the beautiful background under this arch. Such a good idea. At the outbound, Harry the owner has planted these lines of birch trees that you can see here. I think maybe in two or three years this is going to be one of the best photo spots at the outbound um, because it just leads your eye into the distance. So I thought I'd have a play around in there before going down to the little bridge that they have down there. They've also just cleared this area of trees to make a brand new photo spot where you can see the bridge. And this is actually perfect for, for pictures. So as you walk down from the outbound down the track towards the farm, there's a little shaded area where the trees are overgrown. So on a sunny day like this, it's perfect to keep the couple out of the strong sunlight. So what's going on here in this picture is that the trees above us are blocking that really harsh overhead sunlight, which is really unflattering. And the hole that has been created by chopping the trees down behind them forces the light to come in from the side and backlight them. So we get this super soft flattering light on the couple yeah, a really nice highlight coming from the back. It overexposes the background a bit, but I suppose that emphasises the fact that it was a really bright, sunny day. You can see here that when I move them into the open field, just to start to use the open spaces, because it's such a, a harsh, sunny day and it's kind of midday, the only shot that works really is when the couple are looking at each other or looking into the sun, maybe with their eyes down because if you look at the camera, you're gonna be squinting and it's gonna look horrible. Um, and it just it's really hard to, to make a shot work in that direct sunlight. Again, these shots are those just in-between moments where a group of friends have got together and taken their own picture and just hanging around in those moments after where people start to relax more and have a laugh and hug each other. Uh, are such fantastic moments to capture. I love this picture of mum and dad after the meal, just kind of 
chilling out the back in the shade, uh, looking at Joanna and Thomas with their friends, and you can just see the pride uh, and the reflection in their faces. Absolutely love that. Let's get through the speeches. So, as the sun starts to go down in the evening, that really changes your approach on a bright sunny day. You can start to work with that direct sunlight a lot more because it's a low light source. It becomes uh, easier to work with and more flattering. I just thought I'd get a bit experimental with the wood panelling on the barn here. Um, that's quite a nice shot. This is when Thomas decided he wanted his own personal photo shoot on the grass. Uh, and I love Joanna in the background coming to uh, grab him by the collar. So you can see that Joanna's changed out of her wedding dress here. And this is a fantastic example of being flexible on your wedding day. When Joanna and Thomas were practicing their first dance a little earlier in the day, Joanna realized that she couldn't do the dance that they wanted to do in her wedding dress, which is something that they hadn't predicted. So what would you do in that situation? I think some people would have a meltdown and storm off into the sunset maybe, but Joanna actually just went and borrowed her mum's outfit that she ha had packed for the day after and did her first dance in that with a massive smile on her face and even agreed to do another set of pictures in the evening light. So the final pictures I wanted to get with Joanna and Thomas were uh, in these kind of little group of trees which had some flowers on them and I wanted to experiment with something called free lensing uh, to get this really blurry effect around the edges and we just had a laugh uh, in the trees there. This uh, is Joanna and Thomas practicing their first dance again, uh, totally kind of spontaneous moment, perfect background, uh, just a nice moment of Joanna kicking her shoes off. So the story behind this picture is that they had obviously prepared these leather jackets for the end of the evening, grease style, and I'd asked Tom to move the car into a better position so we were in the shade so I could get this kind of soft look. And then we realised that Tom had actually left his jacket back at the hotel. So we convinced one of the guests, one of the evening guests, to drive back and get it for us, which was... Um, Pretty, pretty amazing of her, to be honest. And it did mean that we were able to get these fantastic pictures. Tom on the car again. So they had a big choreographed first dance with all the wedding party, which is actually incredible. Uh, and then the party went on into the evening. And that's it. Thank you for watching this wedding walkthrough. If you've got any questions, if you're a photographer and you have any technical questions, just pop them in the YouTube comments below or send me a message. Or if you're an engaged couple and you've got any questions about weddings in general or photography, um, please feel free to do the same. Thank you for watching.